Would you believe it? I finally got the clout to receive a review sample. Yay! Now, with all the mood drop reviews going on on my channel, you would think they were the ones supplying me with all the sweet weeby nectar, eh? Actually, no. I have been sent a package from KZ, of all people. You know, the brand that made the CRN, which I did not have the highest opinion of, and some recent drama, which I will not get into too much for this channel. But let's make this clear. I was contacted by representatives from KZ offering me a review sample. I was not given any money or any other financial incentive other than a review sample. I requested full creative and editorial control with all rights to criticize the product if there are shortcomings present. All of my judgments regarding this product are 100% my honest thoughts and opinions as it always will be. And of all the products they could send me, they sent the memest thing of all. This, this 12 driver, eight switch meme they call the AS24. Had some reservations given, you know, KZ's spotty reputation with drivers. Uh, but nonetheless, I was quite curious as to how this 12 BA meme would perform. So easy video, right? You know, write this thing off as a meme, it's garbage and there you go. But no, the story is not that simple because it's not bad to be honest. And dare I say it, even somewhat competitive despite the high price of one or 25 bucks that it demands. Why is this the case? Well. Let's find out. I remind you, this is a $125 product, but KZ is still giving you a standard KZ affair, which is uh, just a pretty small cardboard box with some like text on here, but it's very hard to read. Granted, this thing opens up with a flap instead of the uh, inner sleeve, outer sleeve, and clear cellophane, very cheaper stuff, but still, this is very underwhelming. Inside of here, you will see the AS24 displayed in a foam insert with a small metal plate here that, again, says the driver config inside. Take that out and you'll see a pack containing the good old free sizes of KZ Starline ear tips, uh, basically a standard thing for all KZ IMs. With the AS24, however, you do get some pre-installed extra pair of foam ear tips. These are actually of decent quality. Uh, you know, they have good memory, but they rebound very well. But they're just not the best fit for my ears because they're a bit too big. Oh, and uh, inside this very roughed up pack, you'll also get the usual KZ cable in silver. Ah, because I was supplied VKZS24 with tuning switches, you'll also get this little to adjust the switches. And finally, you'll have the KZ Quick Start Guide that doubles as a warranty card as well. Note that this manual does not include any information about the tuning switches and I had to contact the KZ representative to get some documentation regarding it, which is a pretty bad oversight. I mean, I gave Moondrop flack for downgrading the Chew 2 unboxing and that thing was 20 bucks. Meanwhile, here's a $125 product with an even more barren unboxing experience. And it's lacking some critical instructions as well. Uh, yeah, you get the extra pair of foam tips, and, and if you buy the AS24 with tuning switches, I, I guess this metal thing is like an extra accessory. But come on, KZ. This is essentially your flagship, your most expensive thing you offer. I expect more pizzazz and more care in the unboxing from this whole affair. The days of bare minimum packaging are over.
And if you don't have anime waifus to help with that, then you seriously need to invest in a more premium unboxing experience. Now with the AS24, you're getting a pretty spruced up version of a usual KZIM. Whilst yes, the construction, it is still mostly just plastic, it, but you do get this very fancy blingy front plate here with this geometric diamond pattern that actually look pretty nice. I will make note that the internals here have been improved as you can see. Uh, usually with other cheaper KZIMs you'll see a lot of the glue residue and a bit, a bit of messy wiring but with the AS24 the balanced armatures here they seem very neatly placed with proper acoustic tubing for driver grooves and I don't really see any glue residue hanging around. Now god knows if all the 12 balance armatures are working but I will leave the task of disassembling and testing the individual drivers to more capable hands. The switches are placed to the sides of the AS24 and you will see two four sets on a gold colored board. They can be switched either on or off. However, we see another stupid oversight here in that the orientation of the switches are flipped on the left and right sides. So if you want the same adjustments on both sides, you have to flip the left switch up and the corresponding right switch down vice versa. Uh, this is some pretty counterintuitive placement and it certainly made me a bit confused thinking my AS24 had some massive volume imbalance when it turns out I, j I just flipped the switches in the opposite directions of the two sides. I hope the KZ would rectify this in future batches of the AS24. As you can see the AS24 is certainly bigger than your usual IEM but it still fits the ear relatively well. There is no venting on the AS24, which gives it extra isolation compared to other hybrid and dynamic setups, but may impart a pressure buildup feeling in your ear if you're not used to it. Next up is the usual KZ cable. It was okay when this thing was included in, you know, cheap $20, $30 IEMs, but with how much the competition has stepped up their game, even Moondrop has a better cable nowadays. This cable is now really, really weak. I mean, it doesn't tangle much, the microphonics are alright, but I certainly expected something more premium and better for this price tier. Now, KZIMs have always been very easy to run off of whatever source you plug them into. However, it does have some nasty static noise due to being so sensitive. This manifests itself the most when all of the eight switches are flipped on but it is pretty benign when all of them are flipped off. Speaking of which, let me explain this switch system. It's pretty easy to operate once you get the hang of it, although I had to find out how to work it from other reviewers and the KZ representative. The top set affects the base and lower mids, whilst the bottom set tunes the upper mids and highs. Essentially, the top first switch applies a 2 decibel boost to all frequencies. Switches 2, 3, and 4 of the top board add 1 decibel each from the 20 to 200 hertz region for a total of a 3 decibel bass boost. The bottom 4 switches controls the mids and highs. Switches 1 and 2 of the bottom board each add a decibel to the 500 to 2 kilohertz range, whilst the 3rd and 4th switches add 2 decibels each from 8 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz for a total of a 4 decibel treble boost, which sounds like a lot, but in actuality, it, it is pretty gradual. The overall changes to the sound are pretty subtle, and if you didn't like the AS24 stock sound in the first place, these won't really change your mind. But they do give you more options and versatility to play with the bass signature. For my testing, I'll stick with the default configuration with all the switches turned off. And then I will include a few observations when the switches are flipped on, as well as my preferred configuration. As for the ear tips, of course, I'll be going with the trusty go-tos that I always have. It's going to be the Akustoon AET-07, since uh, to be honest, the KZ Starlines, they aren't the most comfortable ear tips. 
Animal Stokesy foamies were good quality, they were just a bit too big for my ears. Now with all that out of the way, let's see if this meme AS24 has an actually good sound. Would you believe it? They made a KZ that sounds relatively balanced. I mean, it's not a base monster, nor are the mids super recessed. Overall, I'd say the tuning is, is alright. It's still not as, re as refined as Moondrop, with some tuning errors coupled with technical flaws. But nonetheless, it's, it's quite improved from the usual KZ. Starting with the bass, I was pleasantly surprised that the AS24's bass by default is pretty subdued. You're getting more mid bass funk than sub bass here, but the bass BAs are doing a good job of providing the depth and impact you would expect from a similar tier of dynamic driver. Bass here is relatively clean and it doesn't bleed into the mid range as much. There's decent bass definition, but I do notice that the bass armatures are still reaching a breaking point a bit easier than the dynamic trap counterparts, especially in bassier songs and loud mixes. With the max 3 decibel bass boost applied, the AS24's bass returns to its usual KZ style, with more rumble and presence, although with about the same amount of impact, not much more. The mid-range of the AS24 is where a lot of the strengths and weaknesses of the typical KZ IEM are observed. You get a fairly neutral lower mid range that's a bit compensating for the mid base boost, but overall I don't notice too significant a lack of warmth. And then the upper mids are where things kind of break down. From the graphs here, you will see that it's got an earlier and more aggressive penal rise from about 1 to 1.5 kHz, and this makes for a peaky mid-range. It's made worse by the bit-crushing artifacts due to the balanced armatures kind of overloading, a common fault that I've noticed in many other KZ products. It's fairly controlled here in the AS24, but you will still hear this technical fault in about 20% of your library. Making this mid-range implementation fairly decent looking on the graphs, but it's still needing much refinement when it comes to actual listening experience. The sad part is that the switches don't really help much for this overly aggressive rise, only boosting it further, so you'll have to intervene with software EQ to tone it down a notch. The treble on the AS24 is alright. Still a bit rough, but nowhere as roller coastery as the old CRN. It doesn't go too hard into it and sizzle up everything, and there's only a little bit of sibilance that does sometimes help to increase perceived clarity. I do hear a decent amount of treble detail here, not to an impressive degree like the Kato, mind you, but the extra layers of Christmas in music are being well presented. The switches add a collective 4 decibel from 8 kHz to 20 kHz, which I feel is a bit too much and introduces a sizzling artifact. But the 2 decibel boost from one of the switches is a good sweet spot, introducing some extra high end presence, even if sacrificing a bit of that neutrality of the bass sound. And of course, you have a whole 8 switches to play with to fine tune the FR to your taste more. And for me, I tend to turn on switch number 2 of the top board for a 1 decibel bass boost and switch number 3 of the bottom board for a 2 decibel boost to the extra treble presence. Essentially, I've made the AS24 into a slight V-shape IEM, although I wish the treble boost wasn't so extensive, since it reintroduces some sibilance. But of course, further fine-tuning can be done with your own software EQ. Soundstage width on the AS24 is typical of most IEMs, slightly wider in your headspace, but not much more. Soundstage height is quite good though. I'm actually hearing good layering of instruments reproduced with some varying height instead of stuff just kind of lining up on my ears, which adds up to good imaging capabilities, which even outperform your typical $100 to $200 segment IM, if only by a bit. Technical ability on the AS24 is a bit complicated. It has very good separation of macro details, definitely punching above its weight here. 
something I've always recognized KZ for being able to do with its offerings. And the AX24 continues that tradition. Lots of busier tracks are handled with ease on the AX24, kind of justifying the 12 bass armatures packed inside by performing multiple musical elements at the same time without blurring or masking them. However, it continues to be lacking in the micro detail department, and it feels like in more nuanced tracks like Sun Lux's music, a lot of little touches of detail just aren't being shown off quite as well. With the AS24 only focusing on sort of the surface level of music. Dynamic range is better than cheaper KZ products, but I still hear the AS24 just playing everything at a loud volume instead of at varying levels of amplifications like IEMs with better dynamic range. So at about 180 bucks MSRP, of of course you can find it a bit cheaper used, but Kato is roughly within the range of the AS24, though somewhat more expensive, and an interesting contrast to KZ's design philosophy, which makes for an interesting comparison. Now, if the KZ only gives you the bare minimum on packaging, Makato is a feast of a big box with anime waifu packaging, a myriad of accessories like the carrying case, the pouch, spring tips, foam tips, with much more substantial documentation to the point of excess. Build-wise, we see a difference in approaches as well, with the AS24 using the cheap feeling but relatively rugged KZ plastic build, whilst the Kato uses a more premium glossy metal construction. Both do share a common trait of being shiny glossy fingerprint and scratch magnets though. I wish they were matte to be honest. Uh, but sound wise, we again see the contrast of KZ and Moondrop, with strong technical abilities fighting against a more refined tuning. The AS24 goes all out on hardware, with 12 BAs, whilst Kato uses just one dynamic, though a very good one. Base on the AS24 is better than the Kato, thanks to a similar amount of definition, but being able to output more quantity, if required, by the way of tuning switches. Mid-range is a win for the Kato though. I've praised it before and it continues to flex Moondrop's tuning abilities, Whereas the AS24 is on the right track to a refined tuning, but it still exhibits too many artifacts and tuning flaws. Highs are a total win for the Kato, with a natural reproduction of clarity and a crystalline quality that I still haven't found a peer for till this day. The AS24's treble doesn't do much wrong here, but it pales in comparison to the Kato's. Technical ability is where the AS24 flexes its muscles. It outdetails the Kato in terms of macro elements. Quite an impressive feat, and I would even dare say that in the $100 to $150 tier, you won't find anything with better macro detail than the AS24. However, the Kato does present better micro details. But coming into this, I thought I would just straight up prefer the Kato, but instead I, I find myself wanting to steal a bit of what the AS24 does to give it to the Kato, rather than simply just dismissing the KZ. I, I still prefer what Moondrop does by merit of tuning excellence, and the treble clarity of the Kato is something magical that I can't even find in flagships. But the AS24 holds its own. And if you want better overall separation, I would actually give the AS24 a shot. You've read the title of the vid, right? When you think of a Bethesda game, you think of an open world with a lot of potential and possibilities, but also a fair amount of bugs, and certainly not without controversy. I find the AS24 to mirror much of this recipe. It's a balls-to-the-walls affair, with its 12 bounce armature guts, giving great separation abilities with a whole 8 tuning switches allowing for versatile adjustments to the bass sound, which itself is fairly neutral and reserved compared to the usual KZ IEM. However, it also has tuning issues making for aggressive peaky mids made more noticeable by the usual technical flaws 
and a bare bones unboxing experience with missing documentation for the very same tuning switches that it advertised. KZ themselves certainly fit the controversial criteria, what with the QC randomness and their less than subtle public relations record. As a product divorced from the context of the company that makes it, the AS24 is a technically strong IEM and very customizable, and it offers up decent value in the $100 to $200 space, though not without flaws and lacking a lot of the refinement from its competitors. Whether consumers will spend the significant amount of money required for the AS24 and for KZ, well, that's a whole another can of worms.